Give the, I can set the context for this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you can talk about where you found the machine or whatever, and I'll talk about where WAC came from. <laughs> so this is a black dev box. Um, there are about 100 of these made, seeded to uh, um, early software developers for the immediate computer before we had really an, an OS and a disk file system and they would use it to download code in, that they would be working on for the Amiga and, and test that. It was very primitive and typically uh, either a terminal or it went through another computer so that they could um, like a, use a, a modem program and, and you talked to, to Carl's ROM whack. Well, let me talk about where WAC came from. So I wrote a debugger called WAC, as in whacking a bug. And uh, it was a developer tool that was available, you know, that you would load and use for debugging. But I realized that if you were running your code and you had an exception of any kind, that you didn't necessarily have the debugger loaded. So that was the reason for putting ROM whack in. So that it was native to the ROMs and would pop you to you know, the console and let you type in commands and sort of poke around a little bit. You know, and hopefully you'd find some clue that would tell you why your program crashed. So you could look at your variables or whatever. Right, you could look at your um, so memory. You could look at the memory, you could look at the stack, you could, look at the, you could disassemble um, code. And, so and it was cheap to do, it was only like 2800 bytes or 3K or something. That and you didn't have to actually remember what the commands were, as long as you just read the bottom line and says uh, press a question mark, and it gave you what were the uh, allowable keystrokes at that point. So I could um, dump memory, dump, dump, dump word. Okay, let me look at this. Dump memory. Um, <laughs> there we go. So that's dumping the location zero, which is where the 68,000 interrupt vectors were, and actually we're looking at, at the same time, we're looking at it up here. Could you provide any offset, or was it always from zero? No, oh, yeah, I, 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 could, I, yeah, I just press, press return, and it was just used with uh, zero. You could, um, um, fill memory. And give it a start address, and then an end address. And then, um, so 16 bit word, W word is 16 bits. So I could do like F0, F0. And you look up here. So we just filled some, filled some RAM. See the fill happen. Yeah. Yes, yeah, see the fill happen. You can also poke at the, the, the I.O., the, the chip memory, uh, with the, the uh, poke command, poke word, and then the chip, the base of the I.O. of the chip registers is at DFF, and 180 is the offset to the color palette. And so I could for like full bright. Let's just do B. Um, this is blue. And so if you look at this, the background color should turn to blue. And so that's poking at the color palette and, and the, the Denise chip. Um, so what's cool is it's always there. It's always in memory, you know, it's always in the ROM, so you can use it whenever <laughs> you need right. to have a floppy even running. Right. So and then when an interrupt, when a, when a, <laughs> An exception happened where there wasn't. This is before Guru Meditation Number and uh, and screens and stuff like that. It would break into the it would break into the debugger and you'd immediately get as long as you were hooked up to a serial port you would. Uh, and so you could look at what was the program counter when the when the exception happened. So on this box, how is it that it entered ROMWAC right off? Was there an exception when you booted that caused it to I, go to uh, this? Or um, well, it, it, it tried to load something from the floppy and it failed, and so it had nothing to do. So this something. wasn't the normal boot sequence. This was a box that was running something special. This is a box. Well, well, for this, this is what it, the boot sequence was. This is a development system. Yeah, but my development system would boot from floppy. Well, and it would try, but there was nothing in the nothing. Oh, in and the it floppy. would fall, always fall back to run. Yeah, it would fall back to run. Okay. Yeah, so it failed to find something in the floppy, and it would like, well, what, what do you want to do now? 
Yeah. Um, and uh, so and in here, so there's the ROM board there, and this is the the original Amiga CPU board, and um, three and a half inch floppy and old switching power supply. This is dev unit 1818, which I think this might have been the last one that they, that they actually made. And then over here is dev 002, the second one. Well, can you bring the camera can you bring the camera I've got a close up of it late, okay. earlier and uh, and it this one actually went to uh, don't ask so the, the guys who did the voice of the Amiga software oh yeah they, they did the they also did the uh, same thing for the Mac but uh, this this was uh, provided to them to develop uh, the, the narrator voice, device the narrator device and and the enunciator and, uh, and so this is a, a, a very early version of this board. The, the layouts of the chips is different. It's, it's completely different. And, um, and, so, and it's also it's an aluminum case. So it's, I, I never, I'd forgotten we made these. Um, I think that's about it for the, yeah. for the ROM WAC thing. When you would build a new ROM image, how did you physically get it over here? I mean, was it? Did, did you load it from disk, or you we, we load burned, it over serial? We burned prompts. Oh, you? Oh, okay. So this wasn't something where you just okay. There were no e prompts or double, you know, e squared prompts. It was okay. we would erase prompts, burn them, take, and then push them physically put them in. Yeah, do you screw drive, pull them out, and and so these are segregated by. There's an exec ROM. There's one with graphics, and I think there's a. Uh, there's a debug ROM in here. Um, there was also an extension memory where you could load into the extension memory and then boot out of that because uh, the way that exec scan for modules, right? You could scan that, but you could also scan another piece of memory and find things right. in another piece of memory. Right, and that piece of memory uh, would plug into, I think it plugged into here. And that, and that saved you a lot of time because you didn't have to blow the ROMs every time right, you wanted right. to change something. So that's how I did a lot of development. Right. Where right. did the build environment live on? Was it like a Sun Workstation, or did you all do this on HP 3000s? Or no, there were different there were different ones. Over or, originally, it was a Sage, the Sage 4. Okay. Uh, running Idris, uh, Weissman's Idris uh, Unix lookalike operating system, and then we would do. There was a C compiler on there, and. Assembler, and then we would build S records and then download them. I think the L command would load S record files into a specific place in memory, and then we just like like go 2000 or something. And I was using the HP 64000 development system, so that's where I would build Exec. So Exec was always built on the 64000. That was a pretty sweet little box back in the day. That was a really nice. That was an yeah. amazing box that that could even exist. It had an in circuit emulator. They could plug in and replace the chip, so it was running a 68,000 emulated, right? Which was, which was wonderful for debug. That's the best kind of debug you can get. You could watch the registers. You could watch everything. Watch everything. Yeah. 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 That that it did, that sped things up a lot. Yeah, and so the code that he was writing could exist inside the 64,000. It didn't need the RAM and the ROM actually working. It would it could actually run inside the 64,000 and and then twiddle the bits and the, the address stuff on the 68,000 as we're trying to bring up the, the hardware. So then after Commodore uh, bought Amiga, we all got Sun Workstation. Sun 2 Workstation. So that's yeah. when we switched over to, the, I actually ported the Green Hills compiler. Right, yeah. Yeah, I went down to Green Hills and got the compiler. We bought it right. from them for, I don't know, right. like some crazy amount of money. Yeah. And then uh, got it running on the... Uh, yeah, because it made much better code than the... Uh, it the made really running. good code, yeah. yeah. Very optimized yeah. compared to anything else. So, and then it was a while before they finally uh, went to uh, be self-hosting and would use the, la the Lattice uh, C compiler to, uh, to generate um, Amiga, the, the Amiga system software. How many of these were internal to Commodore and how many were farmed out to third-party developers for uh, tools that would you say? Well, there were a lot. Did you just mention Lattice? Um, are you well, talking about those black boxes? Yeah, yeah. Have Mi Microsoft. There was banks. There was a, there was a bunch of people that developed early tools. Um, there was a, there was a, a, a text editor. There's yeah, like TextCraft. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Craft, Craft and, and, and Island Graphics had one. 
and uh, there's electronic arts. Electronic arts. Oh, yeah. they had several of them. Yeah, because yeah. 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 they were also developing the IFF format. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Wait, was yeah. that, was that yeah. considered from the very beginning that they would do that? Or? Uh, no, that came along. I thought, that I thought was, that's what it was. That was great. Greg, Greg Riker was always spending time with us. <laughs> And, and yeah. he was the guy, he was a representative from Electronic Arts. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, it was like, hey, it needs to be a standard format so we can write our games or whatever and have the standard format. Right, right. So, yeah, that was amazing. The fact that they didn't make it proprietary and they made it open, that helped really destroy it. Yeah. Does this debugger exist in customer rooms? Yeah. Somewhere? Oh, it's, 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 in the, every, it's in every box. It is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think so. I, I think so. <laughs> I haven't looked recently. Unless, well, they, unless, unless they, they took ran, it out. Yeah, unless they ran out of ROM. Yeah, Bryce, Bryce may have taken it out if he needed extra space. You know, Bryce Nesbitt took over exactly. But I mean, this was in which versions of the OS? You know, how late? One, 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 two? Well, this is the okay, ROMs. So we, the the ROMs, ROMs, but it was the ROMs were the first one, one ROMs. <laughs> yeah, pro yeah, certainly in that. In yeah. One, yeah. one three, they started to get probably it, it was probably in, it was probably in two, and it may have been taken out for three. If it wasn't, was really, they were like all reliant on having the drive. You couldn't boot the OS just purely for the last three. So at that point, why would you take it out for how many bytes is it? Well, yeah, there, were, there were a lot of changes. We can always do a ROM dump today, and I can just look for those strings to find. Yeah, you you'll eventually figure out the start address and wherever it lives, if it's still there. You right, need to do right. a ROM dump. You can get the ROMs anywhere. I know. <laughs> it's really cool. So the pattern on the screen. Sorry, I'm late. That's, that's the memory map. That's the memory map. So what I... If and you look closely, you can see counters. You can see right you know, there. Oh, it's counters. actually it's live. Blank counter. It's live. It's that's the in, that's the vertical blank interrupt. And it's, it's and so that's that's the the glitter or not the glitter, but the display memory address pointer is pointing at zero. And it's just a single bit plane, and it's just putting it up on the screen with us. See this come up and think, it's garbage, I killed my computer. Well, if there was, yeah, the it, that is, yeah, that's like uh, address zero, and that's where the chip memory is. So you're looking at the like first. You could probably poke the address and move it anywhere you want, right? From the keyboard. I, I could. Yeah, I, yeah, where's my cheat sheet? Right here. Yeah, there's my. So, um, so anyway, that's. Yeah, there's your address. Yeah, this is what people use. They played with the, the, the registers. They probably poked at the blitter to try to make the blitter do stuff. Did you get uh, Spanish 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 Suggestions, enhancements, graphics, the house that had this machine. Hey, could you feel this, this, this to the debugger that you incorporated? Probably. No, there wasn't enough room. <laughs> it was, yeah. no, that was the smallest debugger I could come up with. Right. Yeah. Even putting those strings in there for the auto, you notice how it auto completed the words. That was like, you know. Extra memory used for strings. Right, right, right. Well, they put put the strings out here, and then so maybe they just uh, yeah. Maybe. But they had to be in memory. Right, right, yeah. Right. So they were in the wrong. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, That's it. thank you all That's very, it. very much. You're welcome. Thank You're welcome. You. Yeah. Fun days. Yeah. That was good days. Uh, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far, far away.